What's going on guys and welcome back to another video. So in today's video guys, I'm going to be reacting to my Premier League predictions for the 2019 to the 2020 season guys. Anyway guys, the first question I'm going to get is, Brett, why did you not do a video on this during the lockdown, during the whole coronavirus? Then you would have been able to redo your whole table and you may have got some of them right. Well, I didn't and the simple fact is because I wanted to see how well I did with these predictions over a year ago to now but that's why i didn't want to make a video really and i wasn't in the mood of doing one also i just want to say i can't believe i'm saying this but obviously massive congratulations to liverpool you've smashed it this season i never would have thought that liverpool would win a title it's the first time in 30 years so massive congratulations to liverpool they've absolutely smashed it this season well done to jurgen klopp they deserved it you know they smashed it this season all season long they've smashed it anyway guys let's just get into straight today's video guys so 20th i predicted sheffield united Obviously, Sheffield didn't come 20th. It was actually Norwich City. Now, Norwich, unfortunately, I knew that they were going to go down back to the Championship. But just unfortunately, the Premier League wasn't for Norwich. I mean, they had the worst defence in the league. Obviously, they had Pucky up top, relying on Pucky of scoring the goals. And just unfortunately, you know, it wasn't enough for Norwich. Just not got enough for them to stay up for another season. They probably needed the squad depth a little bit more. The board fully backed Daniel Farke. I think they'll back him next season as well. At least they didn't have to, you know, keep sacking managers and stuff like that. So at least the board are actually backing the manager. He'll just need the recruitment in the summer, go and get these players that he needs and hopefully get them back up for next season at the end of the day. 19th, I predicted Norwich. I was pretty close with this prediction. I knew that Norwich were going down. But actually coming 19th, and it was a massive surprise, was Watford. And I did not expect Watford going down. They couldn't really back one of the managers. They had Javi Garcia. Start of the season, they got rid of him. They sacked him and then they brought in Flores, whatever he was called. I can't remember his name. Then he got sacked. Then they brought in Nigel Pearson. And with two games to go, Watford, they sacked him. Now, Pearson would have probably kept them up if they hadn't would have sacked him. And I think the owners know that they've made a massive mistake by getting rid of Pearson with two games to go and to bring in Hayden Mullins in the person would, would have done a better job and he would have probably kept them up at the end of the day and that would have forced Villa to come down but there you go that's the owner's fault for sacking Pearson and now they'll have to go through the championship next season very surprised that Watford have gone down never would have thought Watford were going down but there you go there you have it 18th, I predicted Brighton Hove Albion. Obviously, it wasn't Brighton Hove Albion. It was Bournemouth. Surprise once again. Didn't think that Bournemouth were going down. Bournemouth, they did really well. They beat two good teams with the last couple of games. Obviously, they beat Everton in the last game, 3-1. They also beat Leicester, 4-1. So, they got some good results, but it was just too little, too late for Bournemouth. And unfortunately, it just couldn't keep them up and they needed Villa to lose, really, to keep themselves up. Just wasn't for Bournemouth. And obviously now some of their best players, the likes of Callum Wilson, will probably come back up to the Premiership to guarantee themselves for, to obviously, to play for their country. 17th, I predicted Southampton. Obviously, it wasn't Southampton. It was Aston Villa. Aston Villa. I predicted Aston Villa to stay up. They only just did it by a, a Jack Grealish goal. Obviously, they drew to West Ham in the last game of the season. Villa, it's been such a, a roller coaster. They've had ups and downs. They managed to stay up for another season in the Premier League. Is Jack Grealish going to leave? Is John McGinn going to leave? And there you go. Villa have stayed up for another season. And they've got rivals now next season in West Brom. They'll have a good derby day there. And coming 16th, I predicted Crystal Palace. It wasn't Crystal Palace, obviously. It was West Ham. West Ham, you know what? I mean, another poor season for West Ham. I expected West Ham to finish mid-table. Wasn't meant to be. I mean, they had Manuel Pellegrini in once again. Just wasn't for him. He just was getting some terrible results. West Ham, at, at one point, they were in a relegation scrap. And they needed to get themselves out of that relegation scrap. And they only just did it. Obviously, they got a good draw against us. That kept them up. West Ham, they've not had the greatest season. But I think with Devin Moyes in charge, I think, you know, they want to press the reset button and go again. Get the recruitment in next season. Get some quality players in. And hopefully, they'll have a better season and hopefully try and get mid-table next season. 15th, I predicted Newcastle. Obviously, it wasn't Newcastle. It was actually Brighton Hope Albion. It wasn't far off Brighton myself. I mean, I predicted the mate team, but they came 15th. It's been an OK season for Brighton at the end of the day. I just wasn't sure what was going to happen with Graham Potter. Obviously, coming in as Brighton's new manager, it proves that they stayed up for another season. They were good enough to stay up for another season. Now that they've got Adam Alana into the team, what are they are going to do now with Adam Alana? Obviously, they'll get the squad depth and hopefully fit Adam Alana into the team pretty quickly. 
Lalana with him being coming from Liverpool, world champions, what can he do? Can he push Brighton now a bit more further and start battling now with the midfield a little bit more? We'll see with Brighton. I think it's been an OK season for Brighton. And let's see what happens next season. 14th, I predicted Aston Villa. Aston Villa finished 17th and they just stayed up. But obviously coming 14th, it was Crystal Palace. I wasn't far off Crystal Palace myself. Crystal Palace went on the worst run since lockdown. They've not won a game since Project Restart. They've only taken one point and that was against Tottenham in the last game of the season. Crystal Palace, they've not had a great end to the season. Wanted, obviously, it to be a lot better, but unfortunately, 14th was where Palace finished. I was quite surprised that, you know, the board were backing Roy, didn't want to sack him. Again, you know, the board are backing him and I think the board will back him. Obviously, get the recruitment that he needs for next season. Are we going to see Zaha leave Palace? and go to a bigger club. We'll have to find out and see at the end of the day. Coming 13th, I predicted Burnley. Now, obviously, Burnley didn't finish 13th. It was obviously Newcastle. I wasn't far off from Newcastle. Newcastle have had a very good season under Steve Bruce. They've got some good results under Steve Bruce. Steve Bruce got Newcastle into, I think, the quarterfinals uh, for Newcastle. I think it was like the first time in 10 years or something like that. Good season for Steve Bruce at Newcastle in his first season. He's had a very good season. I knew that they were going to finish between 13th or 15th around there. They've done good, I think, under Steve Bruce. And with the new owners, what's going to happen? Are they going to get rid of him or are they going to bring in? There's been talk of Mauricio Pochettino of coming in for the job. And we'll have to see what happens there. And obviously, with the new owners coming in, what are they going to do? Are they going to bin off the players or get new ones in? So you never know. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And everyone's really interested of what's going to happen. Coming 12th, I predicted Bournemouth. Now, obviously, Bournemouth went down. Coming 12th, it was actually Everton. You know what? Everton, it's not been a great season for Everton, if you ask me. Because Everton, they had, obviously, they got rid of Marco Silva. They brought in Carlo Angelotti with Carlo Angelotti coming in. He's had some good and bad results with Everton. If you ask me, I think he needs to get a new goalkeeper. Jordan Pickford, not great. I think we're probably going to see Dean Henderson as England's new number one, hopefully. Coming 11th, I predicted Watford. Now, I massively got this one wrong. Obviously, Watford went down back to the Championship. Coming 11th, it was Southampton. You know what? Southampton have had a decent season. Southampton, they were not great at the start of the season. They got some good wins out of nowhere, likes of beating City, drawing to Man United, drawing to great teams and getting some good wins out of nowhere. They got absolutely battered by Leicester 9-0. And then since then, they've really got back to where they need to be and they sort of had to sort of move on from that and it is humiliating when they got beat 9-0 and it was embarrassing as well but since then they've bounced back really well Southampton they've got some good wins out of nowhere they've done well for themselves this season under Ralph and let's see what Southampton will do next season they might be getting rid of Pierre Emil Hoyerberg off to Tottenham, they'll have to get the right recruitment in for next season. Looking forward to what Southampton will do next season. Coming 10th, I predicted West Ham. Honestly, I got this one absolutely wrong. Coming 10th, it was actually Burnley. Burnley have had a decent season under Sean Dyche. Burnley, once again, they've done really well for themselves. Obviously, Burnley beat us at Old Trafford first time in like 30 years or something like that. Burnley, they've had a decent season under Sean Dyche. Looking forward to what's going to happen next for them. Can they push now for Europe? Obviously, they had that last season. But now with them finishing 10th, I think that's decent for them. Obviously, their goalkeeper, Nick Pope, he could be contention for England's number one. Is he going to go off to Chelsea as well? He was not far behind for the Golden Glove as well. He was only one clean sheet away. Goes to show that he was the second best goalkeeper in the Premier League this season. And he did really well for himself. Coming ninth, I predicted Leicester City. It wasn't Leicester City, it was Sheffield United. You know what? Sheffield have had a decent season once again. I obviously got Sheffield completely wrong. I just didn't know how Sheffield were going to do. I just didn't know what was going to happen in terms of if Chris Wilder had his team ready fitness-wise for the Premier League. With Sheffield, they've done really well this season, if you've asked me. Obviously, they bottled it going into Europe. Everyone thought they were going into Europe. Completely bottled it since after project restart so that's why they finished ninth and massively proved me wrong a fair play to sheffield they've had a great season hopefully they can push for europe next season coming eighth i predicted wolves actually coming eighth it was arsenal who expected arsenal to come eighth eh? and that goes to show now with arsenal no europe for next year we can banter them for that not even europa league and not even champions league for them next season and i think having the pleasure of likes of abamian glacazette pepe i think out of them three, I think two of them are going to leave. 
I think Aubameyang's going to leave, and Lacazette's going to leave. They want Champions League football. They're not going to want to stay at Arsenal, and they'll have to really have to get convinced of what Arteta wants to do with his team as well. Really surprised that they finished eighth, but Arsenal got what they deserved. It wasn't a great season for Arsenal. But there you go. They'll need to really be on it next season, and they'll need to get some good signings in. They have to back Arteta if he wants to stay. Coming seventh, I predicted Everton. Actually, coming seventh, it was Wolves. I was not far off this one. The Wolves did really well themselves. I think they've just missed that Europa League. Yeah, they have, I think. I mean, massive shame for Wolves. Obviously, they're still in the Europa League. They've still got a chance to win it with Wolves. Been a decent season for them. A little bit went off the boil since Project Restart. They got some good wins after Project Restart. Just sort of went off it a little bit. Obviously, Arsenal beat Wolves and Wolves got beat by Chelsea. I mean, they've gone off a little bit of the boil, but hopefully they'll want to improve the team. Hopefully get some new ideas into the team and hopefully push on for Europe next season. And I mean, you never know. They might want to get in the mix with United City, Chelsea and Tottenham. Arsenal next season. They've done well, if you ask me, even though they finished seventh. Sixth, I predicted Chelsea. It wasn't Chelsea, it was obviously Tottenham. Tottenham, I think it's been a really difficult season for Tottenham, if you ask me. They were not doing great at the start of the season. Obviously, they had Maurizio Pochettino in charge. And then Daniel Levy had to make that decision and he had to sack Pochettino right away. Jose Mourinho came in. Jose Mourinho wanted Europa League and, and he's got it. Well done to Tottenham. They're making little footsteps and hopefully next season they'll want to improve. Mourinho wants to get some of his players in as well, who he wants. So he needs to be back in the summer as well. We're looking forward to next season, what Tottenham can do. The near enough complete in the Pierre-Emile Hoyerberg transfer. Let's see what happens there. Getting to the top five now. Fifth, I predicted Arsenal. Obviously, Arsenal didn't finish fifth. They finished eighth, obviously. Coming fifth, it was Leicester City. Obviously, Leicester, it's been a decent season for Leicester. They were actually in the top four at one stage, and then they just bottled it after Project Restart. They may have got a few good wins, but they just bottled it. They went from third to being fifth. That goes to show that we had to, United, we had to beat Leicester, really, in the last game of the season. But for Leicester, it's OK for them. They've still got Europa League for next season. They're already qualified for it. They'll just want to press the reset button and go again and hopefully Brendan Rodgers can be back to the summer, get some good players that he needs, some quality players. But let's see what happens with Leicester next season. Hopefully they can go and smash Europa League next year. Into the top four now. Fourth, I predicted Man United. Actually, it was Chelsea. A Chelsea, decent season for them. Frank Lampard had no transfer window last summer. He's had to bring in the youth, got them playing to assist them, and he's done really well with them. And I mean... They've got Champions League football for next season as well, so he's done a, a really good job so far. I predicted Chelsea to come sixth, so he's proved me wrong. And well done to Chelsea, they've smashed it. Obviously, they've got some good players coming in. Timo Werner, Ziyech as well, So and hopefully they might get Kai Havertz in as well. I think they're doing some good business so far in the transfer window. Let's see what happens. Third, I predicted Tottenham. Actually, third, it was Manchester United. I think we had a, another decent season. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has done really well in his first season as Manchester United's manager. Got us Champions League football, just what the doctor ordered. And I think United have done really well in the first season. We all wanted Champions League football. We've got it. Hopefully, we can go away now. Ole can be back. Hopefully, we can bring in Sancho and hopefully get a couple of more signings. We need a centre-back. We may need a holding midfielder and hopefully another striker. So let's see what happens in the transfer window. Coming second, I predicted Liverpool. Actually, coming second, it was Man City. Man City were a flop this season. I don't think they've been good enough this season. Man United has done the double on them. Wolves has done the double on them. So if you ask me, City have not had the greatest season. They've lost too many points to teams that they should have been beating. City, it's been an OK season. They're still in Champions League. Obviously, with the Champions League ban, obviously got overturned. And that meant United had to qualify for Champions League. But City, it's been an OK season. Season. If you ask me, they should have replaced company. Now they'll have to go and replace. They'll have to go and get a new centre back. They'll have to go and replace Leroy Sane, David Silva. And I think they need to get another striker as well. So City are going to be busy in the transfer window for sure. Coming first, obviously, I predicted Man City, but it was actually Liverpool. Obviously, Liverpool smashed it this season. Well done to Liverpool. They've done really well winning the Premier League first time in 30 years. Smashed it. Can't blame them really. 99 points. They try to go for the 100 points, but. There you go, I mean, Liverpool, fantastic season. And well done to Jurgen Klopp, he's got Liverpool back to winning a trophy. First time in 30 years. Wait for your next one now in 2050 now. 
and I think Liverpool will capitulate next season. So let's see what happens with Liverpool next season. They've already sold Adam Lallana and Lovren. They've already sold two players. So let's see what happens for Liverpool next season. Let's see how he reacts next season. Hope you guys have enjoyed another video. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to my channel if you are new. See you guys in the video in the next couple of days. And peace.